Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning. So, today's uh, topic is uh, major trends in film theory. So, because of the relative newness of the film medium compared with other art forms, Thomas Edison's kinetoscope uh, uh, peephole machines were first opened to the public in New York City only in 1894. We are looking at the beginnings of film theory and uh, how uh, this new medium called cinema started. We have uh, also referred to Thomas Edison's and his invention kinetoscope uh, peephole, okay, which is one of the earliest modes of uh, the moving pictures. We are talking about the year 1894 and how it all began. We are also talking about the Lumiere brothers who first projected their short uh, actualities to a paying audience, audience who paid money to watch films in a cafe in Paris in 1895. So, film theory and criticism are dependent on a limited number of major texts. And the lines of their discourse can easily be traced up to the point when uh, the so-called theory of structuralism and post-structuralism had their profound effect on cultural history in general. From that point on, film theory and criticism proliferated at a very uh, rapid rate, at a very rapid speed and film journals became as much a place for um, discussion, debates, arguments on the issues of art and aesthetics um, as uh, the journals were for uh, essays on literature. So, film in other words acquired the status uh, which was earlier accorded only to great works of literature and film journals and film historians played a major role in according this status to film studies. Much of the discourse on cinema from the start is concerned with the fictional narrative films um, an emphasis that parallels that uh, the vast popularity of such works compared with the more limited and specialized appeal of the documentary and more experimental and avant-garde film. Most of the early theoreticians show a clear uh, uh, leaning gravitation toward the formalist possibilities of cinema and certain formalism and uh, certain uh, aspects of formalism um, definitely underpin the montage theory expounded by the great Russian filmmakers in the 1920s. Um, for example, Leo uh, uh, Kuleshev or Lev Kuleshev uh, from Russia, who began to publish essays in 1917 um, and uh, many books published in the 1920s, uh, um, they uh, talk about the practice of American filmmakers, especially filmmakers such as D. W. Griffiths and Kuleshev uh, started to understand the practice of filmmaking by the great filmmakers of that time. So, there is a term called the Kuleshov effect. It has passed into cin cinematic language to describe what for Kuleshov was the inherent, inherent magic of the film medium itself that is which is the creation of meaning, significance and emotional impact uh, by relating and juxtaposing individual shots. See, we are talking about montage theory, one of the earliest um, efforts to uh, lend a kind of uh, 
uh, intellectual touch to film studies. The idea was that how uh, scenes are created by relating and juxtaposing individual shots, how meanings are created by juxtaposing individual shots uh, resulting in a context that was not uh, inherent in any of the single pieces of film, but was a product of the ending itself. So, Kuleshev's uh, student Udafkin began writing two books, two manuscripts that together were to form become the book film technique when he was working on his picture mother you know mother uh, as authored by Maxim Gorky. So, when the movie was being picturized when the movie was filmed uh, in uh, 1920s Pudovkin started writing two uh, books on film studies. So, in this book he explores his own variation of montage what uh, uh, Sergei Einstein um, Einstein referred to as linkage in which shots are unobtrusively linked together, so that they continuously and naturally flow along with the film's narrative line. So, this is a, a contribution of Kuleshov, but uh, he also pushes theoretically dis theoretical discourse further with his discussion of filmic space and time. Now, we are talking about temporal special um, aspects of cinema and uh, Kuleshov's discussion of um, dimensions created by the editing process itself and distinct from any space and time known in external reality. So, these are the uh, 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 contributions made by Kuleshov and Pudovkin. So, apart from Pudovkin's uh, concept of linkage editing, there is Einstein's uh, collision theory of montage in which the dramatic um, juxtaposition of shots produce um, or produces a kind of attraction to one another that makes the significance or meaning of their synthesis uh, more clear to the viewer. Uh, whereas, Kuleshov had uh, demonstrated how two juxtaposed shots could create a produced context not inherent in the individual images. Uh, Einstein went beyond uh, his mentor in both his writings and also in his films to show that the two images could be actually synthesized in the mind of the viewer to create a single totality and perception even to create a level of thought or cognition beyond the realistic images. In the uh, now coming to another key theorist Andre Bezos. So, in the essays of Andre Bezos written in France in the late 1940s and the 50s, um, the great book is called What is Cinema volume 1 and part uh, volume 2. Uh, so, we have an impressive blend of realism um, and uh, discussion of realist criticism and theory of realism. Realism is cinema actually realistic? Can it be realistic? That is the uh, discussion, that is the debate all about. So, Bezan found Kuleshev's and Einstein's emphasis on montage antithetical to the realistic possibilities of cinema creating instead an illusory uh, illusion of reality that uh, is a product of the interaction of the shots and not a reflection of the world which is actually filmed or photographed. Uh, Bezos praised the American directors such as Orson Welles and William Wyler for emphasizing the individual image itself and what each reveals of reality uh, not exactly through relationship of images. So, an emphasis largely absent in cinema since the silent films of uh, uh, earlier filmmakers, earlier Hollywood filmmakers. Now, through the techniques of deep focus and long take according to Bezos, Orson Welles and William Wyler present space and time as continuous and whole as they appear in external reality. So, that viewers are forced to immerse themselves in the images and select for themselves what to see. Famous scene from Orson Welles' Citizen Kane, where 
while the mother signs the document of uh, the child coming into inheritance, uh, the child is happily shown playing away. Uh, and we watch that uh, uh, the child playing away uh, through uh, the window pane. Okay, but all uh, th this was called uh, the deep focus technique, where all characters are extremely um, and very clearly um, visible to the viewers, and it it depends on the viewers what to select. Unlike the montage, so one of the founders of the French film journal. Cahier du Cinema, Bézon, influenced the criticism of uh, uh, people like uh, Godard and Francois Truffaut and Chabrol and uh, 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 people like uh, Jacques Rivet, who wrote for the journal and subsequently they also became extremely influential members of uh, the entire French New Wave cinema. Bezon's uh, emphasis on the individual image, his analysis of the single motion picture in the context of film genre and his appreciation of the personal and the unique in the achievement of each film artist also had an impact on the new wave films uh, these critics were to direct. But it is basically Bezon's shrewd and um, very insightful appreciation of cinema. Uh, and his ability to respond to the nuances of each work and his uh, um, very discerning eye for his style and form and the use of details and techniques as the source for uh, his concepts that have survived as a model for future writers of film appreciation and film criticism. I would like to draw your attention uh, to uh, a passage from Andre Bezos what is cinema. I will read out this quote for you. If the plastic arts were put under psychoanalysis, the practice of embalming the dead might turn out to be a fundamental factor in their creation. The process might reveal that at the origin of painting and sculpture, there lies a mummy complex. The religion of ancient Egypt aimed against death, of survival as depending on the continued existence of the cor corporeal body. Thus, by providing a defense against the passage of time, it satisfied a basic psychological need in man uh, for death is but the victory of time. To preserve artificially his bodily appearance is to snatch it from the flow of time, to stow it away neatly, so to speak, in the whole of life. It was natural, therefore, to keep up appearances in the face of the reality of death by preserving flesh and bone. The first Egyptian statue then was a mummy tanned and petrified in sodium, but pyramids and uh, labyrinthine corridors offered no certain guarantee against ultimate pillage. And look what cinema did to this. So, along with Bezo, uh, there is another important name, Siege Freud. Krakur, who is uh, also recognized as one of the uh, major advocates of realist cinema. Um, he wrote a famous theoretical text called Theory of Film, The Redemption of Physical Reality, which was published in 1960. Um, and the direction he takes is that the fictional films that most uh, um, fulfill the potential of the filmic medium are those that least distort or remove the audience from the world as we know it. But those films also have the capacity to make us rediscover the real world to expand our vision of it. Now, coming to something called genre theory and criticism, uh, which made considerable strides during the same period of time and which seeks to recognize the very popular nature of film, especially as a product of the Hollywood studio system. Although individual directors might be cited for their abilities in certain genres um, uh, and uh, you know creating their uh, or inscribing the personal stamp within the tradition, much genre theory and criticism was based on the connection between the works and their audiences and uh, attempted to explain the social and cultural needs of the viewer. So, genre theory and criticism was itself the most probable or um, rather most uh, profitable 
probably most pro uh, profitable location for adopting the new emphasis on structuralism, which was having such a deep impact on cultural criticism during the 60s and the 70s. Um, so, Hollywood offered a large number of similar films with uh, um, very well known uh, elements in E genre, which made these works the inevitable source for studies in um, cinema and uh, structuralist approach to cinema. Uh, now, the binary oppositions and structures exploded in the these studies and uh, um, they, they, they may seem too superficial to suggest that deep structures that uh, people like uh, um, for instance, Claude Levi Strauss, the great anthropologist had uh, 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 proposed in myths from primitive cultures or in his uh, treatment of the Oedipus myth. Mm, but then there is a work called uh, Horizon West um, written by someone called Jim Kitsis in uh, 1969 and he where the writer is able to establish a basic structural and thematic um, kind of a construct in the western in the western genre and also show the individual contributions of specific directors within this context. Then uh, there is another great theorist Peter Wallen and his discussions of uh, Hollywood directors Howard Hawks and John Ford in uh, uh, Wallen's extremely influential book. Those of you who are interested in uh, doing some kind of re research in film studies should know this book. It is called Science and Meanings in the Cinema published in 1969 and he also Peter Wallen also uses genre in author structuralist approach to develop thematic structures and tensions in the films of John Ford and Howard Hawks. The most important early work in the context of semiotics was by Christian Metz and his book Film Language, a Semiotics of Cinema, uh, which was uh, originally published in uh, the French language. Now, Metz's major uh, theory is to demonstrate the way in which films signify meaning through semiotic codes, especially specialized codes um, unique to the cinema, such as uh, the arrangements of shots possible in a narrative sequence. Um, there is also something called second semiotics, and where the main idea of the second semiotics is to identify and then uh, uh, explore the ideological structures and codes of capitalist society evident or even implied in commercial narrative cinema. And uh, to tie the ideological focus in uh, with Jacques Lacan's psychoanalytic theory about the child's early developmental stages, especially in the mirror stage to which we regress on some level when viewing the images on the screen recreated within us in the imaginary uh, and uh, where a feeling of oneness and self which is uh, first developed in us in us when we view our reflections in a mirror during our early childhood but now is actually developed by uh, a film's ideology so um, using Jacques Lacan's mirror stage theory and uh, applying it to cinema. Now, there is uh, another important uh, uh, film theorist Jean Louis Baudry, who wrote effect uh, or ideological effects of the basic cinematic apparatus. Um, this was the first of several essays on the subject that were to influence. Christian Metz to further uh, um, uh, his uh, further development and uh, uh, to popularize these ideas in the texts that he wrote between uh, 1973 and 1975. Collectively, they are called the imaginary signifier. Now, um, uh, coming back to Jacques Lacan, his concept of suture, you know what is a suture to stitch up something. 
So, his uh, he gives us a, the concept of suture which film uh, makers and film critics uh, film critics also or film theorists also apply. So, his concept of suture earlier uh, introduced to film theory in Odard's essay La Suture. Okay, so, Jean Pierre Odard. Um, uh, th this uh, concept uh, uh, appears in the essay La Suture um, and it offers much debate on the recreation of the imaginary and how the subject is positioned or positioned on the screen um, and how we impose unity on such techniques of narrative films as point of view editing. So, whose point of view are we? Uh, supposed to follow. So, we have to understand these theories of suture, uh, of mirror stage and uh, points of view, match cutting and eye line matching and on the way how such techniques impose unity and uh, uh, perhaps give us subjectivity. How you know there is a concept of camera subjectivity, subjectivism. So, how these things operate. Now, um, from here we move on to feminist film theory and criticism which, which was also a major trend which is a still a major trend in understanding and appreciating films. So, feminist film theory and criticism has also been a vigorous and influential school uh, and it has had a great impact on the teaching of the film studies. So, early texts in this area offer a straightforward critical approach in which the various stereotypes of women in film are traced and analyzed as products of patriarchal society and culture, but feminist criticism has also become very much involved with the um, ideas of uh, Louis Althusser and Jacques Lacan and semiotic approaches of post structuralist film theory in its attempt to understand uh, sexual differentiation within the narrative and textual codes of the film as well as within the viewing process itself. Now, one of the major uh, essays of uh, um, uh, this uh, school comes by um, Laura Mulvey whose essay Visual Pleasure and Narrative Cinema published in 1975 describes the images of women in the Hollywood cinema as the passive object for the active male gaze. So, these concepts like gaze and objectification of women. Okay. So, you can trace all these back to the great feminist writers of this age and Laura Mulvey is one of the most uh, influential uh, theorists of this uh, trend. So, uh, the idea is that the pleasure of the male gaze is threatened by the woman's representation as a signifier of castration. Mulvey uh, describes two unconscious responses of the male to alleviate his fear of castration. The first of a process of sadistic voyeurism which denigrates the woman and the second a process of um, scopophilia and fetishizing women which overvalue the woman's physical appearance in uh, response to this focus on male pleasure and desire Mulvey herself in afterthoughts on visual pleasure and narrative cinema, uh, which is inspired by uh, Duel in the Sun. It is a movie um, uh, directed by King Widder and uh, Mulvey wrote this essay on visual pleasure and narrative cinema um, on King Widder's Duel in the Sun. And also there is another critic called Kaya Silverman who wrote Disembodying in the Female voice published in 1984. There was another film uh, uh, feminist critic, film feminist uh, Mary Ann uh, Mary Ann Doan uh, who in her essay film and the masquerade theorizing the female spectator. Um, the all these theorists uh, Silverman and Mulvey and uh, Mary Ann Doan they all consider from a psychoanalytic perspective the pressures and problems brought upon the female viewer by films structured for the male gaze and forbidding any positive identification with the female characters. So, one response to the psychoanalytic Marxist approach 
has been a greater emphasis on film form and technique and the response is noted for its reliance on literary concepts and the examination of what takes place on the screen in the context of the viewers reaction. Okay, so, uh, now, let us talk about uh, another uh, uh, trend which is narratology that includes an important dose of viewer responses analysis. The important theorist of this movement is um, mm, he is not exactly a film theorist, but uh, uh, a narratologist Edward Brannigan and uh, he writes uh, uh, in his book um, uh, a, po a point of view in the cinema a theory of narration and subjectivity in classical film, uh, which often uses the vocabulary and concepts of literary narratology to discuss filmic narrative texts. But does so to achieve a detailed analysis of the way film techniques create various types of subjectivity on the screen and subjective responses in the viewer. Now, uh, since the 1960s have been the concepts and the studies of postmodernism, the term itself has been definitely uh, or uh, it has been defined quite uh, mm, uh, you know differently or variably, but uh, persistent elements are the denial of any meaningful theories concerning life, reality or art, fragmentation, lack of cohesion in both cultural and individual identity. So, those are the major uh, features of postmodernism. Again, the subversion of time and history and the domination of the world by media and information technology, which we have created. Uh, and where we have created a reality of science and images for ourselves. So, most significant in this discussion has been Guy Debord's seminal The Society of the Spectacle uh, and also the works by Jean Baudrillard, especially The Simulations, which was published in 1983. And then again, a very seminal text um, I can emphasize for those who are interested in research in cinema and film studies, this uh, author is very important, Frederick Jameson and his postmodernism or the cultural logic of the late capitalism. So, the concepts of postmodernism have been useful so far in the analysis of a number of films and in understanding certain tendencies in modern cinema. So, um, we have to understand Jameson's concept pastish the imitation and accumulation of the filmic codes of the past, it has been it has been especi uh, especially useful and this shift was precipitated most notably by a short influential essay by Alexandre Astru published in uh, um, La Camera Stilo. Okay. Uh, it, it, it was called the birth of a new avant-garde La Camera Stilo published in 1968. So, what came to be known as the author theory was later imported to North America in the 1960s via the critical writings of Andrew Saris and has uh, and his reappraisal of um, Hollywood cinema, which uh, now coming to post colonial theories. So, an important demonstration of the relation uh, between post colonial studies and film theory is demonstrated by the works of France of Franz Fanon whose ideas including uh, uh, discussions of film spectatorship and issues of race in his works called Black Skin White Mass published in 1952. Uh, and uh, again uh, we have uh, works like in unthinking um, Euro, uh, Eurocentrism, multiculturalism and the media um, by Ella Shohat and Robert Stem, where these writers argue that uh, Eurocentrism envisions the world from a single privileged point. Uh, again, there is a book uh, Mystifying Movies, Fads and Fallacies in Contemporary Film Theory and Philosophical Problems of Classical Film Theory. Uh, crit, uh, the great writer Noel Carroll defines theory strictly as a coherent and axiomatic set of statements that can both explain uh, events and foresee them. Then, uh, Carroll uses the definition to justify the critique of much of the film theory canon, preferring a model uh, analytic theory from philosophy as the basis of his work, including theorizing the moving images and a philosophy 
of mass art. Carol is among a significant cluster of film theoreticians who are antagonists to the dominance of what is frequently called slap theory in cinema studies, which is based on the theories of uh, Saussure, Lacan, Althusser and Barth. So, therefore, you get the term slab. So, Carol credited with uh, David Baldwell um, came, uh, co came up with a co-edited volume called Post Theory Restructuring um, Reconstructing Film Studies, where various authors critique the grand theories that had uh, come to dominate cinema studies through the 1960s and 70s, uh, most of which uh, uh, include semiotics and uh, cultural and psychoanalytic studies. So, uh, Bordwell in his book or in his essay rather contemporary film studies attempts to map out the incoherence and trendiness and general lack of solid intellectual grounding of much recent theory. Uh, Bordwell's approach provides a template for analyzing the form in which events in a film are presented including plot, sujet and a story which is also called uh, fabula while cognitivism addresses the cinematic representation in the, uh, in the um, mental activities of the spectators. So, um, let me draw your attention to some of the selected readings here. Please take a look at the bibliography. There is a book by Dudley Andrew, Andre Bezon, The Art of Watching Films by Joseph Boggs, Leo Brody, Film Theory and Criticism. This is a very important text. David Cook's A History of Narrative Films, Pam Cook's The Cinema Book, and of course, you have Deluge's Cinema 1 and Cinema 2. Thank you very much.